Hi, I want to talk about one of my favorite topics. How to generate note events using algorithmic score programs. And how to get the generated events back in blue. There are several programs to choose from. Common Music, Athena CL, Python Score, CS Beats. You could also use languages like Python or Perl or Clojure to generate a score. But in this tutorial, we will focus on what options are part of Blue. This is the instrument, a simple saw wave instrument. It has a filter and a simple envelope shaper, the linen opcode. We will use the GMask object to generate note events for the five P fields of our instrument. Instrument number, start time, duration, frequency, and filter cutoff frequency. We have activated the grid by using Alt S, so let's look for GMask. In the score, right click on the timeline, add sound object, we choose add new GMask. We rescale this object by selecting it and setting it to a time length of 10. GMask has a graphical user interface for the well known program CMask. Its main application is the generation of events to create texture or granular sounds. Let's check out some of the options the GMask object provides us with. We go to Window, Score Object Editor or Control shift e and we see the first three p-fields, already containing some values. This is the template GMask object. Let's hit the test button and see what it generates. Right, 10 note events. And when I look at the start and duration, they are both one. The instrument number here is one. That is okay, as our synth is instrument one. In the score object properties window, or F3, we set time behavior to none. So we are not scaling the notes to the object's length once they are generated. OK, the length of the GMask object is 10, start time is 0, so 10 note events are generated. What happens if we change the start time of the events to 0 0.4? This should generate 25 events. At each 0 0.4, an event will be generated. Duration 1. Yes, works just fine. Back to the 5 P fields of our instrument. We have 3 P fields, so we need to create 2 more. Right click on P3, choose Add Parameter After, and we can choose a new generator type. There are 6 generator types to choose from. We take the first one called Constant. Let's create P5 the same way. Right click P4, choose Add Parameter After and Constant. We hit the Test button and Bob's your uncle. P4 represents the frequency and we gave it value 1. I'd like this to be a bit more interesting, so I right click P4 again and choose Change Parameter Type. We exchange this constant generator for a probability distribution generator. This parameter type generates random numbers and, as you see, the default is the uniform distribution, where all values have the same weight. Generated values are between 0 and 1, so we will rescale them to the audible frequency range later. Right click P4 again. Choose the mask box and we continue by selecting high value table and low value table. The maximum frequency for high value we set to 300, rescale it, minimum will be 100, rescale and enter. Now I will set the maximum and minimum values for the low value table as well. 150. For that low value table, set the start Y value at 100 and the end value will be 50. 
Now, over to the high value table. Max is 300, minimum is 100. We start this table at 100 and we set the end value to 300. Right. P4 now starts at frequency 100 and then takes the values between the maximum upper limit value of frequency 300 at the end and the lower limit minimum value of 100. To top it off, let's give P4 a description. Frequency. Click Test to see the generated events. Values are thus moving from 100, then in between the upper limit of 300 and the lower limit of 50. Values that are generated according to a sort of mask, that yellow color, hence the name GMask, Java Mask. Let's do something meaningful with P5 as well. P5 represents the filter cutoff frequency. Right click on P5, change parameter type. This time we choose random. OK. These random values open and close the cutoff frequency of the filter. So let's put in as a maximum value 1000 and the minimum cutoff frequency will be 100. Ouch, that hurts! Duration is too long. We set the duration to 0.1. Much shorter. And listen again. Ah, oh, much better. Let's speed this up and generate more events. We change P2 to 0.15. Check these events by clicking the test button. But there's also another way to visualize them. We right click on the GMask object. We select Freeze Unfreeze Score Object, and now the object is rendered. We can now see all events as generated by the GMask object. The GMask object has now become a frozen sound object, and you cannot change P fields anymore. The frozen sound object is designed to free up CPU cycles, but we can take advantage of this to have a peek at the events as well. This freezing uses the settings from the disk render window that we find in project properties. OK, let's unfreeze and we're back. GMask is a sound object in blue but I also have the original program CMask installed. To get the note events from CMask into blue, we right-click on the timeline, add sound object, and choose add new external. We click on the external object and we fill in the path to CMask. We send CMask text to the program CMask, CMask calculates the score, and we get the score back into blue. This CMask text generates the same score events as the GMask object. Let me show you. We freeze the external sound object. We freeze the GMask sound object. What a lovely pair. And it's time for some music. In video called External Scores, I will show more programs that generate scores and how to get them back into blue. Let's have a closer look at both objects. We're back to the GMask object and the external object containing the CMask data. It looks like they produce the same result. GMask has a useful graphical user interface whilst CMask does not. But there is another difference. Both objects generate 67 events. CMask and GMask, both 67 events. And at present, both objects are in scale mode. 
Now, when I scale the external object back to half its size and generate the events, it still shows 67 events. And the node events are all scaled to fit the new object size of length 5. Scaling back the GMask object now, press the test button, half the amount of events are created, only 34. Something to be aware of when using external objects like CMask and the like. Yet another difference between GMask and CMask is the fact that GMask has a seed. CMask does not have the seed option. This means that every time you find an interesting random sequence with GMask, you can get that particular sequence back when entering the same seed value. With CMask, this is not the case. The seed value you can give can be enormous, 64 bit long, and every time you get the same sequence back according to that seed value. Next thing I want to show you are the node processes. With these, you can alter the values of generated P field data. They process the node events. A node processor can be found in the score object properties. You can add this node processor to most of the sound objects in blue. And there are quite a few options to choose from. Too much to cover in detail right now. The node processor allows us to quickly create some variations of the first GMask object. We copy the object. Let's multiply the frequency by 2, and we can listen to this object without playing all by right click, audition sound objects, let's add the random add processor as well, just to subtract a small value to the duration of the events. P field 3, minimum of minus 0 0.05, maximum 0. In all node processes that are random based, a seed can be given. I copy the GMask object and paste it. And I add the retrograde processor. The retrograde processor reverses the order of the generated note events. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to quickly show a few examples in blue that makes use of programming languages like Python, Java and Clojure. These are the Python object, JavaScript object and Clojure object. They are all part of Blue. In the score, right-click on the timeline, Add Sound Object. We can choose Add New Clojure Object, Add New Python Object and Add New JavaScript Object. This is a Python object. This is the result of the Python score. Here we have the JavaScript object. And this is some closure code. Piano Face by Steve Reich. Let's listen to the result of the closure code. In another video, I will be talking about some of the external score generating programs like Engine and Athena CL. So, I hope to see you next time. Bye!